back and forth in a second. Okay, so I want to just um, so I've shared this with you. Let's go first. I want to just go first to that yeah, example of show prep. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, that's 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 in your. So if you go look, so this is one hour of a show. Um, it's obviously old news. I mean, I'm saying it's it's this was done. On, I really don't know. I think it was last year or the year before, more likely the year before. Uh, uh, just again, it's. Uh, uh, it, it's not that it's irrelevant at any. I'm saying to you, our content is always it's, it's based on the same, same the same textbooks and stuff for five years. So um, it still applies. It's about just in terms of the the construction of your prep in general. Uh, but you know what I did send her off to do was to go and compile uh, a local and an international story. Uh, this is just an example of. I'm sure. Have you seen this before? Have you seen this document before? Have you looked through it? Yeah. Hello. You can answer that. So I haven't. You haven't. Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, all right. Uh, I suggested you do look through it. Uh, I just want to again, uh, so we can just end off that, just the, the, the whole thing about the news, just to note that it's lead writing. It starts from, it's, it starts from the most important to the least important of, you know, it's normally four or five sentences, right, um, that you that you write out. This uh, particular international story about George Floyd is a little longer, but it's okay. It's not so bad. Um, I'm saying to you, so you have to make sure that you are, uh, you're not plagiarizing and you are uh, taking the article and you are rewriting it uh, in terms of obviously your, I'm saying so it's, so it's your, your original writing, does that make sense, right? Uh, you will you will obviously go look at new sources, uh, so your News 24s, etc., Times Live, uh, EWN, whatever it may be, BBC, uh, CNN, all these things to get the stories that you feel are relevant for this audience, so the audience being your BMH students in this case, so it's got to it's got to have some kind of relevance to them. Okay, um, uh, this particular so for example, just in terms of the structure, uh, I, I'd like you to follow it as well. So in your news at eight o'clock, uh, so eight o'clock in the morning. Okay, illegal miners have been arrested by the Johannesburg Metro, and a bill to pass p police reform in the U.S. spurred by the death of George Floyd has collapsed. With your BMH News, I'm Chris Jordan. Good morning. Pause then, obviously. Four suspected illegal miners have been arrested after a shootout with police and Johannesburg Metro Police Department officers in Sloverville, outside Dobsonville in Soweto. The officers had been in the area on Wednesday investigating the murder of two people when they were shot at by about 20 illegal miners. No one has been reported injured. After the shootout, police found a monkey believed to have been used by the illegal miners in their rituals, the full face murder and attempted murder charges. Moving further afield, a bipartisan effort spurred by the death of George Floyd to pass a police reform bill in Congress has collapsed. This is in accordance to U.S. lawmakers on Wednesday, which was resulted, or which has resulted rather, in a setback for President Joe Biden. The George Floyd Justice in Policing Act was approved by the Democratic-controlled House, House of Representatives in March. Democratic and Republican senators had been seeking to hammer out a compromise and bring the bill to the floor of the Senate for a vote, but they said on Wednesday that they had given up. The failure of the negotiations is a blow to Biden, who was elected in the 2020, in, who was elected in 2020, with South uh, with strong African American support, and has pledged to make police reform a priority of his administration. Ben Crump, a lawyer for the Floyd family, expressed extreme disappointment and said, "In the last year and a half, we have witnessed hundreds of thousands of Americans urging lawmakers to bring desperately needed change." to policing in this country so there can be a greater accountability, transparency, and ultimately trust in policing. And finally, Netflix has released a trailer to the anticipated documentary Britney versus Spears. 
a day before Britney Spears heads to court in her long battle against the conservatorship she has been in for 13 years, which will be available on Tuesday, 28th of September. According to the official logline, Britney vs. Spears tells the explosive story of Britney's life and her pub public and her public and private search for freedom. Director Erin Lee Carr, who directed How to Fix a Drug Scandal and Dirty Money, and journalist Jenny Elisco delve into the tangled weave of the con con conservatorship. Conservatorship, excuse me. I've worked hard my whole life, and I don't, I don't owe these people anything. Brittany had, uh, or can be, or should I say, had been heard saying in the trailer. Uh, in your financial indicators, the rand is trading at 14 rand 67 cents to the US dollar, 17 rand 19 cents to the euro, and 20 rand 11 cents to the pound sterling. Gold is trading at $1,733.50 per fine ounce. And a barrel of Brent crude oil will cost you $76.19. In your weather, uh, the capital of Pretoria will reach a high today of 26 degrees and Joburg 24. Looking at your traffic, there is a stationary vehicle 800 meters after the dip cliff off ramp uh, from the N1 southbound. And Rand show interchange and the left shoulder has been blocked off. Alternative routes are clear along the R53 south. And finally, the Springbok rugby team is to avoid British quarantine with a France stopover before their three test matches. More at half past eight. Um, any questions about that? So I, I, I should have gone, I, I would have gone, I'm just saying through maybe another one or two practice rounds. I think I've done it so many times just that doing it just off the bat is kind of easy, right? Okay. You, you must notice that the very monotone, the monotone um, delivery of the news itself, right? There's a bit of an up upper tone, like a change with the Netflix, I'm saying in your tail ender. Uh, and then uh, slightly also, again, when you are doing the sports, which occurs then at half past, let me just go down. So you'll see that if uh, so then this will be obviously the prep. Uh, I'm not going to go through the prep right now. Um, uh, you'll see that just here. Um, that's just so that quite accurate there. there. There's news headlines and sports. So I do that. I do. I do obviously the headlines. I do the uh, financial indicators. I make sure that I cover the traffic and then. I go into the sporting news, which should be. So what I've done, I think I've given uh, one. Okay, I actually did three. Okay, so three stories. You should do three stories. Okay, um, around the uh, around the the sports. Okay, uh, and then the sports is executed with just a slightly a slightly more upbeat manner. Okay, so for example. In your sporting news today, South Africa will spend 11 days in France in October to avoid quarantine before three tests in Britain. The World Cup winning Springboks head, head to Wales on the 6th of November, to Scotland seven days later and to England on the 28th, uh, sorry, the 20th of November. The tournament's, <clears throat> the tournament's director, Claude Acher, said that we have made an agreement with the South African Federation to be able to benefit from the presence of the team and players to do some promotion for the 2023 Rugby World Cup. Atcher, who continued to say what is currently happening, has unfortunately proved that we're not safe from racism and uh, we had to address the issue to say that it's totally unacceptable and inappropriate in our sport. So do you, do you see a little bit of the difference in the delivery? Or will you be able to do it? You'll be fine. Yes, no? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to just, I'm going to stop there. You can go through that. It is sent in the WhatsApp group and I'm going to just go through music scheduling and why music is important. I've also uh, just, there's this, um, so I'm just go here to, to uh, uh, lesson 42. Okay. And, uh, and it'll be a quick lesson, not because I'm rushing it, just because 
there's not much to explain i'm saying beyond what is in front of you uh what's uh, what obviously you've learned from saying just the beginning of the semester and in terms of rams etc and obviously in terms of uh, trying to balance and schedule music that's obviously important uh because the rotation uh, it depends on obviously the clock. The clock obviously depends on ha ha habits that are based on the listener, right? So we want to keep them listening longer. Um, we also discuss in in first, second, and um, and in third year. We always start off with the background or the kind of understanding the the radio landscape and the history and why it is that we move to different formats, right? Uh, and again, I'll just quickly just quickly recap that that formats were only introduced to radio after World War II because television was introduced, and so like radio had to give more than just what it originally gave before television, which was everything, okay, from from drama to news to whatever it is, like obviously like um, a talk topics or whatever it may have been. It was there all the time, all the time, every day, all day, and people would have the radio on literally, like I say, all day. And because it was the only source of dependable real time information, uh, your print, especially back then, took a really long time to actually do. Um, and so, and people did buy, I'm saying newspapers, it wasn't that they didn't, but um, uh, like we can understand why radio was extremely popular and uh, and then had the threat of television. Anyway, okay, so uh, North America, uh, North American influenced commercial radio places an emphasis on the centralized routine and information led nature of music programming. Whereas producers on the UK public service broadcaster, so BBC Radio and BBC in general, had more freedom to choose their music, particularly in the evening slots. So choosing your music in general is just not, not actually allowed, even though it happens like consistently uh, across our, uh, our local, I'm saying our local community stations. It's obviously not, it's not a good idea because the thing is that the DJ one doesn't understand uh, music programming and scheduling, right? And balance, right? And they don't, they normally choose what they want to hear as well and what they think the listener would like to hear based on their own tastes. Um, something that might be, they might also play a song that has been played already heavily far too much. So let's say a really popular song. They might delve off format, which is normally what happens as well which is based on your license as well. Uh, and for many reasons, this is this is actually a bad idea. OK, uh, so uh, why do you listen to radio? Why is music uh, on a radio station so important? Uh, because again, like it is the it is the number one reason why people listen to um, to a radio station. It is for the music. They've chosen that particular station because of its very a uh, centralized format and particular format that again is licensed to them by um, by ICASA. And the thing is that we like, as much as we lo love Spotify, we love all the streaming services that we can find now. Uh, again, radio does kind of the, the half the job for us as well. And also does, it takes care of that unpre un unpredictability that we actually like that kind of surprise factor. Uh, when we are listening to music, even though we do complain, we complain about everything in life, really. So, I mean, it's not a surprise that we do complain about also, like, how much a, a station will play a song over and over and over, or sometimes about their music selection might not be the best. It's a bit maybe boring. Maybe it's, you know, again, it's personal taste, um, and so on and so forth. Why do we why do we listen to music? So I wanted to bring in stuff that's not is in this particular I'm saying lesson that isn't in your textbook, right? Uh, so so it's 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 obviously got its emotional factors, which is why we listen to music. Everybody on this planet likes music. There's not a person who doesn't enjoy it. So again, just in terms of our psychological side. Like it's it's worked well with with kids in terms of an expressive psychological um, a defect. I'm saying or disability. Like it's it also works well with expression. I'm saying for us in general, as just as as a people, like we love it because it expresses 
like we want, we love it one for maybe fun like we want to dance to it we like the the shallow fun stuff i'm saying to you stuff that doesn't have to have meaning at all so it's fun pop club hits that type of stuff um uh, stuff that you can party uh, and dance to uh, and and just maybe get your day going to when you go to the gym you may be in the mood to listen to a lot more upbeat and again a little bit more um uh, i'd say inspirational music to get you like in like in the zone but everyone when you look at people and you, uh, when you ask them like what's your name your three top favorite songs of all time you'll see that they they all all those three songs 10 to 1 are not the same format one maybe um two they are very different from very different artists as well and the three it's because they have an emotional connection something that has reminded them of a certain situation a story about their life a narrative that they were trying to express and these songs are normally chosen because of that deeper factor okay let's look at just some of these uh, uh, just quickly so stress regulation so we use music uh, just to just to it takes our mind off stuff so I like a quiet room i don't understand a quiet room i um not because i'm, I'm such a advanced human being i can't live without something playing in the background so when i wake up in the morning like there's other pod podcasts with this music playing there must be something playing you understand when i'm in the car there's music playing when i'm like shopping like i've got my earphones on when i'm at the gym i've got the earphones on there's always something i don't like the silence and it's not because of a a psychological thing that I don't like. It just doesn't make sense to me. White noise doesn't make sense to me. Anxiety, it helps with stress, anxiety and anger as well. And loneliness, we can all understand that. Again, music speaks speaks when we cannot speak for ourselves. And so that's why we attach ourselves to a really a, a, like a, an endless amount of of music throughout our lives and songs and artists that, that really is express a lot of the stuff that that kind of compress those situations experiences uh, etc in a nice really catchy and and i'm saying to you catchy anything will be um uh, that that we enjoy uh, we all have the very different and very diverse music tastes when you start really comparing person to person um and also it's basically like chatting up don't bring up music i'm saying in a conversation it's the same thing as bringing up politics or religion like you know you're going to get like you're gonna get hate at at some point. No, but this is wrong. This is better. This is whatever. Just we kind of want to keep it to ourselves, um, and it's it's kind of special in that way. Re, re, uh, re, uh, uh, sorry, uh, rumination. So we sometimes dwell and focus on anxious and sad thoughts. So for example, let's say a person has died and passed away like i say uh they there's songs that we remind us of them we we listen to them together it was maybe their favorite song um maybe they sang it to us as we were kids it was you know whatever it may be reminiscence definitely nostalgia is one big thing so you will you will think of let's say your your first 10 years your second 10 years and well now you'll move into your third 10 years your decades and you'll see that that you have nostalgia that is attached to songs that you'll never let go of you'll never get tired of strong emotional experiences right okay profound experiences that are attached to to certain songs that so it's happening something happens in our life and that song is playing in the background do you understand it will remind us of that moment or an appreciation sometimes listening to music is about appreciating the actual craft of it right uh, cognitive uh, regulation so some of us use music to improve our concentration and focus while studying um or working for example me definitely so if i have to prep or i'm 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 doing whatever it is that doesn't involve another person i'm saying to you yeah there's a lot of mo moments in work that involve no one else and music is great to play in the background like radio is etc identify ident identify uh, sorry identity formation and relatability again we said we, we as as much as we are different in terms of our music tastes quite extensively we also can find our our like like our uh, sects and our groups and uh, you know like our tribes and it's also used as a sleep aid so uh, a lot of people use auditory podcasts songs noise etc to help us sleep 
Okay, so here are some examples of formats, 80s hits, active rock, adult contemporary, adult hits, country dance, alternative, uh, children's radio, classical. So children's radio, for example, just to give you an example, you might be thinking, well, how is that working? Like Disney radio, which was a thing for many, 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 many years, would then choose specifically child catered. I'm saying choose a child, anything between a six-year-old to maybe a 16-year-old. Uh, would enjoy very poppy, very kind of like very safe, very safe, nothing controversial, nothing sexual, nothing um, sexually or, uh, 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 fueled, whatever it is, nothing, nothing thought provoking in a way. Does that make sense, right? Classic kids, classic rocks, pop jazz. You can find a whole list, right? Now, if you click on here, you'll see you go to music genre list and you'll see there's this endless amount of uh, formats that that um, that are available because there are so many stations now around around the world, and because many stations, I'm saying, uh, many countries in this world have so many people, uh, much more than South Africa does, they they have a lot more, uh, they're a bigger need for uh, a lot more stations, commercial and community, um, most of the time more commercial. All right, so. Um, so this is a quote. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. This is gonna be loaded up. I just downloaded it again. I couldn't find it for myself. It's a great. It's a great little handbook. It's quite long. It's 220. It's a textbook basically, right? But it's a great handbook if you want. You always want extra material just in general uh, for anything that you are trying to be a, an expert professional on. So, for example, in radio, you can download it, have a look whenever you want to. But there was a quote uh, by uh, Carol Fleming said, music is not a means of providing a break or relief from speech. Um, even if it enables a presenter to set up the next guest interview in the studio. From a listener's perspective, music is an integral part of the station's output. A production team is responsible for presenting its program as part of the station's overall flow of output and to ensure that the music is blended in to prevent an undue impression of the programming lurking from one item to the next. So uh, to understand that, I'm sure you understand it anyway, that it's not just a filler, it's the way that we uh, we, we bridge our, uh, our, 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 say our, our quarterlies or whatever it is, our, our segments, our different segments in, um, I'm saying within a show and within obviously on a station. It's not just set up, you know, just plonk it there. It's not, again, there's no, there, there's a thought process to it and it's quite a, like I say, a, 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 a quite a higher a upper professional thought process that also involves, again, also music screening beforehand, that type of stuff where you, a lot of obviously labels and, and um, you have to be um, a registered uh, musician at least to try and submit your music for uh, you know, uh, at least some some kind of consideration to a station so that they can play it if it fits a format and it's a great quality and it, it sounds like a great hit, they'll tend to unplay it if it's within their format, right? So within the policies itself, um, I just want to kind of pause there. It's just a little lesson. Do you have any questions? Is that fine? All good? Yes. yes. Okay, good. All right. Hope you're finding it also somewhat interesting. Okay, so um, let me move here. So there's, I mean, the music policy. It's it's uh, it's 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 a heated debate always because the thing is that, like, the person that you choose to be your music uh, compiler, because we don't have music programmers anymore. We have just music compilers. We used to have music departments that have a head, and the head would have obviously compilers, maybe one, maybe two at the most. Like uh, even at commercial radio, there would normally just be one person that would be in charge of the music. You don't really need more than that, right? This person really needs to know what they are doing. Because again, we have this, this like, uh, what, uh, how does a, one person who isn't a, I'm saying, graduated professional in music, I'm saying itself, right, decide on what is good and what is not? Um, one, we have to obviously understand and research what the public wants, which which is what you did in your uh, formatives to see what is trending, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We also need to know whether it's a bad song or not. So, for example, it can come from a very, uh, uh, a very uh, profound and established uh, um, uh, um, uh, man, a musician. 
but it can be a really terrible song. And we have that obviously, like uh, I'm saying all the time, right? That doesn't mean you have to play it. So the, the music compiler in the station will say, listen, we have the, uh, when, when a label will submit, let's say, like there's a, there's a new, um, I say a new LP, right? So whatever it is, right? That's uh, released, quote unquote, I say LP, but that's genuinely what it's still kind of referred to as. So a new album, right? Uh, the thing is that th that the, the, the label will then cross off literally, I mean, physically, they'll actually cross off if they send you the CD um, or if they're going to send you like, a, uh, I'm saying digitally, they will knock off the ones that are for music, I'm saying for, for commercial use, right? So the uh, the predefined songs that will be released, and we know that, you know, when a, when a musician comes out with a new album, um, then you can see like over a couple of months, I'm saying like even a year, maybe a year and a half, there'll be songs that are selected from that album that will be released one after the other, right? Thing is that all stations do not play the same music. So the thing is that, for example, maybe the one, the first one that is released is a massive hit across maybe the majority of stations, but the other stations will choose to, if they do play that format and that musician, choose to go with the second release or the third release or not play that particular musician at all because they're not part of their format at all okay um uh, so so we would uh, th there's there's again <clears throat> there's a lot of admin work i'm saying corporate work that is involved in terms of like obviously like uh, kind of defending the music policy and up, uh, and and obviously like the upkeep of it right uh and then just the, the process of music scheduling music selection etc etc right so those uh the uh, so um uh, just I want to say, so there's the conflict will will happen with probably ten to one the music music compiler and I'm saying to you the program manager right will come in and they'll have a discussion if there is a strong I'm saying a strong opinion about tracks that have been um, played maybe that I'm saying playlisted uh, and crossed over should I say uh, and maybe are a bit too risky maybe are a little pushing the edge a little bit, maybe are a bit too boring, or maybe too complacent, or like I say, just it's bad, it's a bad song, but it's by a famous artist. And just because maybe it's doing well um, uh, in certain sectors doesn't mean it's actually a good choice to put onto the station. So there's many factors that we look at. Those are the individual tracks of the music's of the musics uh, of the music, sorry, are secondary to the speech content, whether in the form of uh, a DJ banter or structured features, and also they will complain, right, uh, about and the conflict with one another. Those were the, those were the selection of each piece of music uh, that is central to the purpose of the show. Or the program is essential, essentially about the music featured. So, for example, a music featured show, speciality show, like an uh, old school R and B, an old school house, or it'll be, let's say, like love tunes. I don't know, whatever it may be, right? So it, it, the the, the program manager will have to have input on when it comes be, becomes dependent or it affects the programming because there is, I mean, it's about their DJs and about their shows. So um, obviously consensus will be met. It's not like they will fight, 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 like and slap one another around. Um, a distinction between the two types of program rather than reflect, uh, sorry, a two types of programming rather than reflects the way that the ty typical listener uses radio at different times, right? So the thing is that we'll see speciality shows obviously pop up uh, uh, on Friday nights um, and um, and over weekends, right? Uh, we we won't hear them, although it is it is probable uh, more likely in the late evenings as well. But that gets a little bit exhausting to hear a speciality music show. I'm saying to you, um, like I think Jack Aranda did with um, uh, what's it? There's, uh, uh, there's there was a DJ man. I forgot his name now. Anyway, uh, but he's he recently just left now. But he would do a music related uh, show every evening, and it's a bit exhausting as well. It was it was successful enough, but you know it has a time and a place for a daytime show. Uh, management will look at uh, presentation skills, entertainment value, and how their persona will fit the station brand values. And there, we don't care about the music taste, as I've explained to you before, because we need people to keep listening, both because the presenter is good, but then 
the music needs to be great. I'm saying to top 40, bubbling under, balanced around, all the different sectors of, and there are many categories that we go through, not just like I say, uh, we, we we did a bit of an example, right, uh, with our F1. So um, the, the the knowledge, the, obviously the knowledge, and, and again, kind of that talent uh, uh, of a music presenter is essential. You can't have someone present a music show and actually not have this affinity of knowledge like extreme knowledge, small facts and stuff and that they're constantly obsessed with. I'm saying learning more about uh, uh, the medium itself to actually present uh, just a, a very credible music show. The head of music at a station frequently uses computer program like RCS and RCS has many, there's, I mean, there's, there's uh, many aspects of RCS, for example, um, uh, there'll be selector or there's what is the other one with the Z that we use now as well. Anyway, the point is, but there's different sects of it. So, for example, RCS will have only for music compilers, only for let's say program managers to do the the clocks, whatever it may be, and there'll only be let's say a certain point. I'm saying program uh, program uh, sub program, should I say that will use as playback systems, right? Uh, Zeta, there we go. Okay, never mind. Zeta. No. The call uh, for variety is not a call for large number of titles. How do they win uh, with fewer records by making sure that every record is right that requires music testing and careful attention to rotation and flow? Okay, so this was written a while ago, just uh, uh, on Biz Community, just to point out some aspects of of uh, on Decile's great points that she actually made here. So uh, appointment listening, why speciality music shows are so captivating. Like, um, so she goes into, again, the psychographic segmentation of an audience, okay? And what it is that they need in terms of values. So for example, like religious and gospel shows, lifestyle. So for example, dance shows and club shows and live, uh, like outside broadcast shows, that are done, you know what I'm saying, to at a music, like a, like an entertainment, I don't know, like for example, in Monte Casino, or whatever it may be, or at an actual club, or at a party, or at a, a, a event, doesn't matter. But the thing is that what she, what she, what she um, expresses, right, uh, for the PBS commercial radio stations in South Africa, speciality music shows are a standard feature to the lineup. So community stations do have them as well, but some of them don't have enough. So they'll have one or like they'll have one or two. I think they'll have, let's say the top the top twenty top forty, which is a music speciality show, the most popular one across the world, right? But then they would add maybe one. I say I say it's one definitely, maybe two extra speciality shows that would go according to their own format. So you can read the, the article on this community. Like I said, she makes some nice points there. Um, did you know that Top 40 Radio was the brainchild of a man called Todd Storrs, who's the owner of a radio station in Omaha, Nebraska. You noticed that jukebox owners selected a relatively small number of songs very regularly. So um, he decided to play the top current songs in heavy rotation. Do you know what a jukebox is? Do you know what a jukebox? Do you, do you know what it is? Can you guess? It's not that it's used in old times. It's still used in a lot of bars and clubs and whatever it is because it's a great, it's it's a great um, it's a great novelty. Do you know what a jukebox is? Yes, yes. Also the music system 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 system. they put yes. the money in. Yes, thank you. Okay, I know that I don't want to inter insult your intelligence. I just have no idea how far your generation is, you know, is exposed to stuff that is actually an old concept. You understand? It's an old, it's an old novel. It's a novel novelty. But he took the concept of the jukebox because again, like it would be even in. Like let's say coffee shops and stuff like that, and let's say restaurants where you could go and pick out whatever it is, but people would pick out the stuff that they really liked. And and I'm saying to you, once they once they would always once it once it was a hit, 
So they would hear it on radio, they would see it on mu um, TV, they would see the music videos, whatever. They would find themselves going back and picking these nostalgic, cool or current, you know, cool current songs that, that they'd like and leave everything else out. And that kind of gives you a good indication as to uh, how we do select music just in general. Again, that kind of like, like we're going to um, cull the fat at the end of the day. Um, but just again, just uh, some cool facts. Uh, he began a top 40 when playing 40 tracks exclusively or extensively throughout all programs, there was a risk that the audience would become fatigued if the, the, they always played uh, or the, always appeared uh, played uh, in the same uh, order. So the thing is that, for example, if you know a top 40, I mean, it changes and chops every single week, right? It doesn't always mean that there'll be a new t a number one song, it, but it's carefully rotated. One, for obviously longer listening, that's the thing. Uh, and uh, I, I realized, uh, well, I only, I only saw this because we, we constructed something specifically uh, on, on my show at 947, which was called the top, it was called the top 30. Uh, 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 and it was, it was a terrible feature. It was terrible. We would skip a number of songs, you understand? And we would hide it and we do it every night, right? And we'd play about, let's say, 10, 10 songs that would come. But we'd do a countdown. And it, it was given different names over like over over the years. You understand? It was then re refurbished to like the top nine at nine and then the top eight at eight. And it was but it, it's 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 exhausting, I'm saying, to actually listen to to it. And that's just another way of of just regurgitating what is your top 40 hits in one hour it wasn't it isn't exactly a reason people will listen to it and enjoy it maybe for one night of that week but would rather tune into the top 40. um i'm saying so so the top 40 found its place and it is a it's i mean it's it's a mandatory uh feature that is that is on on pretty much every station now they have a top 40 or they've now downsized it to a top 20 so it's quicker um so he had okay two boxes in the studio where uh, the presenters had to take one from each box in turn returning the used disc to the back of the original box and the a box uh, might contain five or six of the most popular current hits while the b box contained a larger number of songs uh, including those formerly on the a list and the new new releases yet to be reached or peak which is our bubbling under so this man was was super i mean it's super cool to know the origin of it I mean, a lot of people don't really care about history or i mean obviously i'm passionate about radio and the, the format i think that's very cool that that it's just it's kind of like again it's it's the exact type thing as you inventing i don't know sliced bread or whatever it is or uh, a kettle or whatever i don't know uh it was a great way to kind of manually um express his idea of the top 40 and then it it we obviously made that into sort of a formalized approach okay i'm nearly done um uh, while different software offers a range of options, all such programs are driven by three main things, right? Or three main sets of data, the universe of music tracks. So that is everything in your database. But we have to, so the music compiler will also add all the information that will pop up actually on your printed playlist or digital playlist so that you have extra information about like who produced it, like who is the vocalist, uh, who like like who's um, um, uh, who's the label or whatever it may be, when was it released, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, uh, we don't really care about copyrights. I'm saying mentioning on air or the copyright reasons are or the copyright details. The requirements of each music slot in the program's clock for each hour of the week, specifying what category, style, and era of music would be acceptable. So that is when, like I say, it's building that clock as we've done before. And scheduling scheduling rules. So in other words, how many of what song, of what, what category of song must we play in an hour? A, B, list, different eras, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly as you've been uh, taught or introduced to before. So continuing with the music policy, the total library of songs may be divided into, again, as I say, recurrent and current hits, for example. And again, just a, just a whole bunch of subcategories of those because, because the, the recurrent and current hits will change so regularly, you'd have to recategorize them into subcategories, which would make it easier for you to then 
uh, uh, be accurate in terms of building the clock, which is a once off, but then for the, it's at the system, the playback system, the Genesis RCS, whatever it may be, right, um, uh, would, would then pull uh, a very obviously accurate um, a depiction of, uh, of rotation that will work well with the listener. So a typical music radio station uh, may only have between 500 and 2,000 tracks on rotation, on rotation, right, at any one time. So that's, I mean, that's uh, that's a lot of songs, right? But remember, like, for example, a lot of those songs are like like classics as well. And the, and the different, uh, like, it's not classics, like all just classics that fit within the, the, the format, but we're talking about five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and then, and, and older and older and older, like and it will pick and select like uh, around and throughout the day and week from those different types of, of, of well, those uh, decades, half uh, decade, decade and a half, whatever it may be, right, uh, or half decades. A computer program again is suited, as we know, and the finished sequence can be imported into a station studio playout system, which you will see as a jock, and you will see it in studio when you go and do your shows. So this is something you can go and download Radio DJ for free to, to um, I mean, and if you want me to help you out on how to use it, just so you have a playback system on your own computer, uh, and so you can get used to, like, uh, so this is basically, I mean, I'm not saying this is how RCS works. Uh, I literally have just started using RCS and it is a one, it's a one channel thing, man. It's not a two or three or four channel thing like Genesis, which you'll be using, right? Um, but I was, uh, I mean, uh, I'd never been interested in RCS. I went for training on it uh, in terms of the background. I'm saying that the back end of it um, in terms of building the clocks and et cetera and building the libraries. But I, I never worked on it. I didn't think, I thought it was a lot more advanced in terms of, again, I always thought more channels, the better, which it is, right? Um, but working with one channel is actually all you need. We worked on it. Uh, all community stations pretty much have a playback system that works with one channel. There's an example of a library. You'll have different, obviously, shortcuts that'll bring about um, uh, different windows over here. These are things that you want to play like they they are in your um, quick play, for example, that you want to do, let's say, bed music. And this will be like, for example, the log of what has played already. Um, but I, again, I can show you should you want to actually practice uh, with with something at home. Otherwise, what you have learned, uh, uh, you know, in studio with Genesis, you can go and book those sessions, please, now. Um, just an hour for yourself so you get used to the, the, the so just the studio in general. Okay, so um, uh, the, the presenter, I'm going to say, is allowed to deviate from the playlist only when it is one. It is approved by the music manager in commercial radio. You may not do it at all just generally because the thing is that once again you will you will mess with the balance of like i say the different categories so what happens is that if you let's say in the first half hour like let's say we've let's say you've got you now your show it's coming up you got six songs in the first hour but for some other reason like because maybe your links were a bit longer there was an interview there was this whatever it may be and you only managed to play five songs after the news break the, the sports um bulletin at the bottom you would start you would leave the sixth song that you missed out out and start immediately with whatever is scheduled after that that half past break right because th that is again done in rotation so you're getting back on track um uh very like i say so very important again that you that you stick to stick to that a music a, a, a director usually reports directly to the pr program director um <coughs> again, a program manager and station manager, again, so that they can have a consensus around evaluating the music and then moving on. But the rotations are, are done by, again, that station research and the gut feel, uh, and and uh, and normally that is on the mark. That's why they're hired. That's why they do their jobs. I'm saying to you, why, that's why they have their jobs. Okay. We're nearly nearly done. So in closing, there is the importance of listener participation. 
So again, we need to know. So as we know, we can do it digitally right now in terms of music. Uh, we can pay a couple of people to constantly, I'm saying, review music on a daily basis, right? Um, uh, and and that's that's become quite handy in terms of understanding uh, the, the the very small versions of the AMTs, but not as as effective as because people have different feelings. I'm saying during the day, and we just said in the beginning of this lecture that like music is based on emotions, right? So so we look at that and we we take it with with a good pinch of salt, um, but for. Uh, for for share just for a discussion, what programming and music formats are the following South African radio stations? Um, so, as many as you can, uh, try and guess what what uh, what what formats music formats these stations are. Even if you never heard of them, just say you've never heard of them. Okay, and we will end there. So, what is Metro FM? What is Metro FM's music format? You can try for me. CBC, go ahead. What is Metro FM's format? I'm guessing you've moved away from the computer. I'm going. Unless you, yeah. So I'm going to give you no, some. No, of I don't know. Okay, you don't know, but you must just say no. <laughs> I don't know, Chris. Okay, so that is, it's actually, it's AC Jazz. It's Adult Contemporary Jazz, right? Uh, uh, which you, you're going to say to me, but jazz is a lot of saxophone playing. It's not. Jazz is a very broad, very broad um, uh, a culmination of what is considered I'm saying in many senses urban, okay? But it's adult contemporary jazz. Jacaranda is, I guess, adult contemporary, right? So so stations like Lotus, Lesedi FM, um, uh, you know, in particular are PBS stations. So again, the stations are based on Whatever the, like I say, the, the, the sect culture is based on Lotus FM is for the Indian uh, population, right, of, 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 KwaZulu, of KZN. What is Tux and UJ FM, FMs, as well as BMH Radio will fall under that and I suppose Metro FM at the same time. Uh, sorry, Massive Metro, Massive Metro. There is, is Youth. What? Contemporary. Um, uh, it's, it's taking a bit far. So it's youth, alternative, urban. And I want to, yeah, I can say, con, con, I wouldn't mind adding contemporary. Contemporary means that it is a hit, hey? That's the thing. So when they say contemporary hit radio, CHR, oh. you know, contemporary means like it's 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 now it's now it's happening now so when you say adult contemporary you will find that it will be like i said when you listen to jack Aranda specifically because it is the the official ac station i'm saying to you like you're going to hear things that that are some there's a lot of music that is current right so you'll even hear i say even because it is surprising when you add you say you say uh Lizzo, but then you see jack Aranda. And because Lizzo was introduced as quite hard, she was she was hard urban, right? Okay, in the beginning, she became very contemporary. You understand? I'm saying so that basically, I say with adult contemporary doesn't only appeal to the youth; it appeals across a larger market, right? But youth contemporary is a different contemporary to adult contemporary, right? Uh, so youth urban, uh, for example. So, uh, like, like Kaya FM. I'm gonna in like, okay, well, let's say Radio 2000. What about that one? So, so Radio 2000 and Kaya FM are, are kind of the same in the way that it's an abridged, they abridged. They're they're a hybrid of talk and music. Agree formats, right? Okay. Okay. 
okay <laughs> it's like you don't agree the kfm has enough talk you understand it's 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 so both rated 2000 which is supposed to be um for uh sports commentary first that is it but then because again we don't have a lot of that happening uh it is there's there's oh, there's there's a sturdy i'm saying weekday lineup and weekend lineup that is that that's music and and talk oriented as well kind of um but not not at all uh, as, at all as close as is safm for example 792 and power uh kai fm uh, uh kind of again breaches that that border of uh, a good balance between talk and music as well um okay i'll leave it i'll leave it at that um okay any questions i'm going to stop just save that stop the sharing right uh any questions at all just in general no sir sure okay okay um uh, please go and try please try uh, what i've sent through and so uh tomorrow if you join the class it'd be nice to actually see what you come up with i'm saying please write those so i've sent the stories on the whatsapp group as as you will see uh, and I've given you the links for the, again, the weather, the traffic and the financial indicators. Okay. Uh, and then you can read it out and uh, we can maybe work on some presentation tomorrow. In addition to, uh, like I said, we have, we have clo so, some closing lessons again, because we're coming to the end of, um, and then what I want to actually then do is just practical. I'm saying with, uh, with, with, I'm saying uh, the, when I see you next week, we'll just be practical. And then I think we have one more week, which is um, theory, which I just want to actually focus on the the podcasting, uh, and then we can we can pick this up again. I'm saying in terms of legal and sales and stuff next semester. Okay. All right, but have a good day. Otherwise, All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.